Are you somebody who flees from crisis? Do you feel uncomfortable when things get hard? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you can learn to embrace crisis, uh, you really might be able to make some significant changes in your life. Today, we're going to look at chapter six of the power of habit and explore this idea. Is there power in crisis? What's up, everybody? My name's Tony. I have to lose weight. And today we're working on our mind by going into chapter six of The Power of Habit. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. I just want to give you a few nuggets, a few things to think about. Chapter six in The Power of Habit is the power of crisis, and it focuses primarily on organizations. But I'm going to bring that around to our own personal health journey. The way they set this chapter up was to look at organizations that had significant failure, the Rhode Island Hospital. Uh, the underground subway system in London, and then they just did some general corporate America type conversation. The big nuggets are this. In organizations, there are many people competing for power. Uh, many people that are wanting to get ahead, but they all live in the umbrella of the organization. And in most circumstances, no one's desire to be powerful or to be number one will override the goal of the organization. Most people stay within the bounds of the organization. They don't want to wreck the organization and therefore they temper their own goals, their own desires to make sure that the organization as a whole is successful. And the term they use in the book is truce. Uh, like when two sides war with each other, if they decide not to war with each other, they've come to a truce. They call it truce. I'm going to call it compromise. I think that's going to be easier. Let's think of it like that inside of organizations, people that are ambitious, trying to gain power, they want themselves to look better than others. They will come to a compromise for the greater good of the organization typically. If we look at the Rhode Island Hospital, for example, the way that the nurses compromised with the doctors is they just kept their mouth shut. And because they kept their mouth shut, the doctors made a tremendous amount of mistakes. So the first key idea, there is compromise in organizations. The second idea is those compromises can lead to disaster. And the third main idea is that it is in these moments of disaster or it's where crisis is imminent that the potential to challenge the compromises, the potential to make change that is effective, that's when it truly exists. That's when the motivation is there because the danger of the crisis, the danger of the disaster is compelling enough for change to occur. So how is that applicable to our health journey? It's the same thing. If you think about your journey for health, we all strike a compromise. We all do things to balance out warring factions inside of us, if you want to think about it. There's an intellectual pursuit. We know that we should be healthy, but then there's a feeling, an emotional thing. Well, I, I want to be healthy, but I, I want the comfort of uh, eating carbs. This whole dance goes on, and we're constantly making compromises in our own organization that is us. It's in those compromises that we risk disaster, that we risk crisis. I think because the inevitability of our unhealthiness sometimes is so far out, we don't even consider it. And so that's what I'm challenged to do. That's what I would challenge you to do. If you are compromising on your health, if you are not making a commitment to be more active, to lose weight, to be healthier, what are the eventual outcomes of that? Does that mean you may not live as long? Does that mean that your quality of life may not be as well? Does that mean you can't go on that trip that you want to go on? Does that mean that you can't have that experience? that you want to have. The interesting thing about people is we're able to push all of that out as something we don't even have to consider, but the reality is it is there. Instead of running from that crisis moment, instead of running from the idea that this will happen eventually and not thinking about it, this chapter challenges us to, to think about it. But the challenging thing is, if all we're doing is worrying about the future, worrying about our health, then all of a sudden, doesn't that diminish our quality of life? Isn't all this stress and turmoil and worrying about the eventual outcomes of our poor health, isn't this going to cause us more turmoil? Well, the interesting thing is the beginning of this book, they taught us that as we learn habits, uh, they become automatic for us and we don't think about them as much. And so I do think it's a balance where you're going to continue to think about, well, what happens if I don't get 
get healthy. But as you incorporate these healthy habits, they become routine. And then that's one less thing to worry about. So if you're in the beginning of your health journey, you're thinking, wow, I got to watch what I eat and I got to exercise. And it's just, it's, it's more than I can handle. And I think a lot of us feel like that. But the cool thing is if you can start adding exercise and then all of a sudden after four or five weeks of every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday going for a walk, all of a sudden that's not a big hassle anymore. And yeah, you're thinking about your potential health, but you're no longer like worrying about, oh, I got to walk today. I got to walk Wednesday. I got to walk Friday. It frees you up to think about other aspects. But then as you continue to put these healthy habits in place, creating healthy routines, uh, it becomes less and less cumbersome. Now, I'm somebody that struggled my whole life to have these healthy routines, so I'm not dismissive of the fact that it's not easy to get there, but this book is a good reminder that there is some things that you can do. It's not a hopeless cause, but you know, this was powerful. Again, uh, are you somebody who says, look, I'll think about it tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's not the time to think about it. Not to fret, not to make us depressed, not to make us feel bad about ourselves, but to be realist, to be people that have control of their lives and saying, okay, look, if I don't do these things, this is the potential outcome and what habits can I put in place so that is not my potential outcome. Does that resonate with you guys? Those are the nuggets from chapter six. Do you spend much time thinking about the potential negative outcome? Is, are you letting this be a motivator? You think you can do that with it being more good than harmful? I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Please continue the conversation below in the comments. My name's Tony and I have to lose weight and I will see you on the next video. Bye.